this is the first tutorial that you have to do uh, around the printing sheet and use the printing metals. Then we will go forward for add some doors, ceiling, and walls to the model that we have. Previously, we worked on grids and we created some grids here. As you can see, that some horizontal grids and vertical grids. Remember to change the labels of grids. For example, the vertical one is it should be referred to the alphabetic number and the horizontal ones should be numbers and they have to start from one side for example if we have grids here we um, want to call it a just double click on that one call a call b and c so on the other side, it's better to start it from one and then continue two and three. These are kind of the example grids that we have. And uh, we all also did something in the previous one that uh, if I show you in the 3D view, you can see that shape of link these are that uh, what we did uh, in the previous session that we created some uh, footing here and also the connected being the tie beams that you can see here is available that we connected all tie beams together and we had some concrete columns uh, we adjusted the dimension uh, in the edit properties like that the edit type that we have on the left side so you can do this uh, addition for all of the objects and elements and that you have in the model i created another uh things here that i am going to remove them now these are the slabs that we have but uh, the other thing that we accomplished uh, was the beams and it was a kind of the high profile beams that we define on the level three. So we had different levels, we had different type of grids. Uh, if I go to the level view that you can see that, uh, for example, the east elevation, you can see that uh, the variety of the levels that we have. This is the uh, isolated uh, footing that we have here and also the tie beams and then we define a level above the this type and we def we created another level level two or maybe you can change it as a ground level if i double click here you can get ground so okay so with the distance of 70 or is up to whatever it is in your project design uh, it's going to be the the slab location that you want to put the slab and this is the ground floor of the building that you want to walk inside and the, another level that we created on top was uh, we called level three you can rename it but uh, remember that uh, this is the another story that you have and you can add more levels on the top based on whatever is your project mm, but we extend some columns to the uh, final level that is going, going to be level four here for example uh, is for roof that uh, it's the ending of walls and columns and then you want to put the roof above that one that we want to do it later but uh, you can do it also today based on the whatever we go forward first of all uh, this is the drawing that we have in the plan view and you can see that we plan some columns here that is, they are visible in level three we are in level three and there are columns here so um if you want to annotate your drawing you can go to the annotate tab and assign a dimension based on what type of the dimension that you're looking for just click on that and then define the location between you are looking for for example between these two objects and then this is the dimension so wherever you want to fix it you just click and it's going to be fixed at that point so it's you can lock it that you avoid any changes by mistake 
but uh, this is the way of the dimension. You can also uh, define different dimensions, for example, angular for any curve or circle that you have. Like as you can see, there is a great help available if you hold your mouse above that button. And uh, um, also aligned and linear. That the linear is, for example, if you have the diagonal line, so you can have the horizontal or vertical distance of that one, the dimension of that one by this linear. You can see in the example, but if you consider the aligned, it can give you the exactly the, the dimension of the diagonal line in the diagonal direction. So the rest of them is just for additional information like the text that you want to adjust it. And so the simple dimension that you have here is work. And you can also define the diameter or radius here. So it's better to go forward for the printing. So as long as you want to print this drawing, for example, this is your drawing and you want to uh, print it. Uh, remember again, at the beginning, it's really important to you change your project unit based on you, whatever you, you prefer. Because when you want to print out, you can change all uh, parameters into the design. And then when you go to the manage and project units, you can just change the units. For example, it's in centimeter, you can change it to whatever you are looking for the design, but typically it should be on centimeter in metric system. But uh, when we want to go for, our, for the printing, let's uh, uh, go back here modify and see uh, here this is the design that we have in the level three we can be any other and this is a 3d view that we have but uh, the ones that we are looking is a title block around this one and it's going to be loaded from view menu on the top and then when you are in view menu that you have the 3d view also you can click on sheet and the sheet gives you a new window. This new sheet and gives you the opportunity that you can select the type of the title block that you are looking for. The default is available for the A0 of the metric system uh, that you can go inside that one and load this one. Or maybe you have some available from the other design that you created. You can load it from load. You can load and then find a file of the title block that you have. And here, for example, I defined one horizontal and one vertical. You can see the demo here. So based on the drawing that you want to print it out, so it's going to be horizontal or vertical. Typically, um, we use it uh, for different uh, views. For example, the landscape is for elevation, the landscape one as we call it horizontal and the portrait one as it's called vertical is for the plan view if it depends on the dimension of your building but uh, when i want to load this one we face some problem here um, and it mentions that the defined tabloid horizontal the rfa was saved in the later version of revit my current version of the revit is 2020 but uh, maybe it was created in 2021 and it's not possible that we load it here. This is a problem that you have to consider later if you want to use the lower version of the RV. But for the current project, we use the A0 metric that is available here and just I click OK. Now you have the title block, but it's empty. You have to connect it with the drawing that you have and here for example you want to see okay i am going to see maybe the elevation view one of the elevation view for example elevation is i go to the left uh, side uh, under the brow project browser you can click on the S and drag it inside uh, this area and then release it and it can shows the view of the elevation here then you, ha you have to place it here but very very one in the drawing maybe you want to show show two elevation at the same time in one sheet so you can put one of them on top and another one uh, at the bottom but uh, here i click it center and you can see that this is the uh, east elevation that we have and the difference between the dimension that you see here and also the paper size is uh, 
related to the design scale because this mm, default sheet that we selected is in A0, so that's a make a difference between the dimension of the drawing that we have is smaller than that one. So this is the viewport that you have here. I click on element, okay. Okay, now, um, whatever you left in this drawing, so you can also modify the, the title block that you have on the right side. So the title block that you have here uh, is, just click on that one. When you click on the title block, okay, so is it possible that you, uh -oh. I just, the menu, okay. And when you click on this title block, the ribbon that you can see on the top is visible. And by clicking on edit family, you can adjust the dimensions of the title block that you have here. For example, you want to move something down up, or maybe you want to change the scale. As you can see that it's possible to change the scale here, or maybe you want to move them up and down and, and modify this title block based on your, whatever is your attitude. And then when you finish, you can load into the project. Here I don't want to in, do any changes, so I just click load into the project. Do you want to save changes? Yes. And there are no, no, no changes because I didn't do any changes. And then, Okay, no. Okay. Okay. But uh, here, uh, if you want to modify the text inside the title box that is available, just double click on that one and you can see that you can change the name and, and to whatever you want. For example, this is your project and you can change the name of the my project and then the owner unname any ID and you have any other related information for the draw drafter of the work so it should be inserted here any title of the drawing any versions should be inserted here with a description and a date uh, for updating of the drawing because maybe we do some changes in the drawing and we cannot find which one is the latest one so we have to refer to this table but uh, when you finish your work with the title blocks you are ready to Print it out. So you can go to the file menu and then here you have the print and go to the print. In the print, you can see that um, there is an option of the printer, the printer name that you have to modify the printer name based on whatever is available and, and installed on your machine. Uh, here I select the Microsoft Print to PDF and you can adjust the properties of the that one to make it portrait or landscape. Here is the landscape we're drawing, so it's follow the landscape, so I don't do any changes inside. And the second part of this window is about the file that is a combined multiple selected views or shapes into a single file. So you have to choose this one that you have both um, here, the drawing that you have and the title sheet, title block uh, in one single file. And then you go further to right, this one to also, uh, sorry, that you can also define the location that you want to save or wherever you want to save, you just define the location and then save it. Uh, you can adjust it. And uh, then you go and select the print range that is going to be selected view or sheet. So you have to select this one. This is a print range and you have to select what you want to print. Whatever you want to print is what the, it was the, for example, the sheet name that we have here and also the elevation that uh, I go forward if it was the elevation of this. So these are what I wanted to print it out and then I click okay. And just double click, double check here. The name of the file was A104. So I had to do some changes here. Okay, it's so A104, and it was the east that I bring it here. 
So click OK again and save setting to use the Revit file. Yes, it's a setting too. So it asks for the new save of the setting and then later you can use these settings. So I save it as a setting too and it's appear here. Then I click OK and uh, to set the two print shares separate files, you should come to It said that you selected to have the separate files. So I click no because it changed to the separate files. I have to click on the combine and then I go for what? Again, I click OK and it's looking for the uh, printing. And you can see that, the, for example, the test now I just place on that one and the drawing will be visible exactly like this. And here is a print test at you see that the PDF that we have with the title block and the our design or drawing at the middle of that one. Okay, let's continue with the rest of the tutorial today. So when you want to create the project that you have, you need to define grid lines and then columns, foot lines, like we have in the 3D model here, the tie beams, uh, footing, tie beams, the columns, and beams. Yeah, this, this is already the structure of your building. But uh, we have some architectural features that we have to add to the model. And uh, in, in this level, you have floors and also uh, walls. But from, what about for the floors? Uh, you can define floors for the ground floor and for the level that you have here. So it's up to you that how much you want to extend it. Uh, let's do, go to the east and see. Okay, the ground floor is here. So I just click on the ground floor. I want to add something here. This is the ground floor, ground floor view. And I go to the architecture tab. And here, here has the option of the floor that you can add some floor. Click on that one. And in this step, here there is a different availability of the, the options here in the ribbon that uh, you can select one of them. Here I choose rectangle, draw, draw a rectangle for this area. And remember that this is on the ground floor when I choose this one. And I selected the generic floor 150 millimeter. If you don't have this one, you have to uh, created by create a multiply of that uh, sorry duplicate of that one so uh, I created this one and I go back to the 3d view to see okay it's available but it's not fixed because I didn't click on the check mark so I click on the check mark and I fix that one then I go go to the 3d and you see that there's a slab here that we have for the floor um, but um, let's uh, create another one in it was in the ground floor. We have another one in level three that we want to look for. So go to the level three. Okay, and this is the level three that is loaded. Again, I go and repeat the work for the floor and then create a rectangle. But here I want to have some trust. So I just extend one side based on the location that I am looking for. Uh, then. I click that one and then press OK. Go back to the 3D view. You can see that this is a 3D view. I forgot to, I think I forgot to change it. No, it's OK. It's correct. And so the slab that you see here is, is, is uh, for the floor in the second level. But um, in another word, it's one level. Because one slab in the ground floor and this one is in level one. But I didn't change the name here. I have to change it. So the extension of the columns can, is ready for another floor, or maybe for the ceiling that you want to have uh, for the roof. Yeah, it's up to you and um, the purpose of the purpose of the project that you have. So the uh, you can create this one, and you can have this extension. And when you finish that one, you can start to create the walls. For creating walls, we have to go into the level view again, 
uh, maybe in the ground floor is appropriate is uh, appropriate plan for creating walls and then go to the architecture tab and here you have to select walls when you select wall here you have a variety of walls here and uh, you, you see that in any plan we have some exterior walls for the exterior boundary of the wall and some interior walls for the interior area of the building so they have they follow different type of the walls and you have to select it here so here we are looking for the exterior break and block on mpl method so click on that one that we selected and then if there is some dimension or something else if it be appear at the bottom and it has only one dimension if you want to modify a ball you can go to the edit type and then here you can see the specifications of the wall so here uh, it should be do not wrap don't want to wrap it and also wrap it at the end you don't want to wrap the wall at the end but because that then uh, about all of them should be put some sailing but uh, the function of the wall is the exterior that mentioned here the color is black and we can change it and there are some adjusted you know, values for the heat transfer coefficient and thermal resistance. These are values that you can use it in energy analysis. Uh, if you want to do energy analysis at the end of the project, because it's necessary for all some mission, uh, the uh, cost of the building is related to the energy that is used, but uh, you have to adjust it later um, if you want to modify it based on your preference. But uh, it, this value, it will change if you modify the structure of the wall and the structural wall defined here in the edit. Click on the edit and you can see that there are a variety of uh, layers that you have here. See the preview of the wall, okay. Uh, so this is the preview of the layers in the wall. This one is the kind of the, uh, from the interior onto the exterior, you can see that uh, what kind of material that you have here. and Mm, each layer that you see here has an explanation about the material. So, for example, it said, okay, this is the finish and this is the brick and common. Okay, and then this is a concrete masonry unit, a, a infiltration barrier, and the thickness of each of them is visible here. From the thickness, this is obvious that the, the largest one, 15.2, that's related to the metal slot layer, is this gray area. And uh, this is the structure of the wall but the, the other layers that is kind of the additional layers for isolation uh, whatever it is or for the exterior side view uh, all added on the top and you can adjust them you can just click uh, on each of them for example for the brick concrete you can click on these three dots and then uh, in the new window that you see you can change it you can change and select another times that you are looking for and this change uh, can change the view and in some case uh, some cases that can change the uh, thermal resistance of the wall at the end but uh, there are variety here and you can select that one the identity of the model about the cost of the that one it can be adjusted here also in, this is for the appearance that this is the appearance of the current brick common that we have and if you select others you can see the appearance of the others also here uh, yeah, but um, in some cases they, they don't have any uh, but this one has a carpet shape and uh, I don't want to ch do changes here so I click on castle but you can see that there are all these specifications even the thickness of the wall can be changed and if you change the thickness you can see that the resistance here and the thermal mass that you see on uh, above here it will be changed by changing uh, these values for example this is 7.6 remember for the later uh, I change it to 10 and when I click here, you can see that the value increased. So 7.6 was that one, and it was the general position. Also, you can see the demo of the changing the wall here. I don't want to change, click cancel. So in this level, I just click cancel to have that one. But at this level, uh, you, uh, you have the line object that you can create the exterior wall by just clicking on the building and then have the exterior wall whatever location that you are looking for 
Okay, but remember that is the, it was on the ground for the base constraint, and the top constraint was unconnected. So this is a mistake. And if you go to the 3D view, you can see that it's going to be only for one view. Here, okay, it's extended to the end, but in some cases that you can see that it, it cannot be extended until the end of the drawing. And you have to define which level you are looking for to create the ball. Here, if you finish that one and just I click cancel, so I'll refinish with balls. And the details of the balls, if you go in and zoom in, you can see that the layers available, and this is the metal stud that you have here. Now, also, you have to create some interior walls, and by the interior walls, you can select from this list. And we have some interior walls at the bottom, and the interior wall that you want to select is uh, 126 millimeter partition. And then you can create, for example, here until here and there, and then. That's all for interior walls that you have here. And uh, this wall, and if you select this wall, you can see that this is the ground floor up to level three, but maybe you want to change it. This is, for example, ground floor on, yeah, the above one is a level three because we didn't change the name. It was better that you change the name, but uh, for, to make it more clear, yeah. let me, I do that. I put it level, Zero, and okay, and then this is level one. Yes, and this is roof. Okay. Now again, we bank to the ground and we select the wall, uh, wall here. And, okay, and we see that actually you, you see some arrows here. No, it's a kind of the controlling layer side that this layer sides are on this direction. And uh, now we can adjust it. Yeah, it's under level one, but maybe you want to extend it to the level of the roof. But in for interior walls, you have to just extend walls uh, between levels, not uh, continuous until the end of all levels that you have. So uh, it's okay for now for the walls, for the walls, and then. Uh, we can continue with selling all other objects in the next region.